Hi, I'm Neil Cassell, the founder and chairman of the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, and I'm here with Chase Koch, the president of Koch Disruptive Technologies. And we're going to talk about Focused Ultrasound, the technology, about Koch Disruptive Technologies, which made a recent investment in the field. Um, why don't we begin by framing the conversation with an overview of focused ultrasound. So focused ultrasound is an early stage, totally non-invasive therapeutic technology that is a highly disruptive, game-changing alternative or complement to traditional surgery, radiation, a new way of delivering drugs in extremely high concentration precisely to the point in the body where they're needed, and a way to stimulate the body's immune response to cancer and thereby augment or enhance the effectiveness of cancer immunotherapy drugs. Focused ultrasound will transform the treatment of a variety of serious medical disorders, including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, epilepsy and stroke, OCD and depression, benign and malignant tumors of the brain and thyroid and breast and lung and liver and pancreas and prostate and arthritis and many other conditions. And thereby, it holds the pro promise of improving the lives of millions of people around the world. In 2017, approximately 100,000 patients were treated in 60 treatment sites around the world. Our goal is that by 2035, more than a million patients will be treated in as many as 10,000 treatment sites around the world. Today, in various stages of research and development and commercialization, there are more than 130 indications or disorders. Approximately 30 of these have regulatory approval around the world, five are the US FDA, including prostate, essential tremor, Parkinson's tremor, pain from bone metastasis, and uterine fibroids. Being totally non-invasive, focused ultrasound can be performed on an outpatient basis with no incisions and less pain and decreased complications, including hemorrhage and infection and collateral tissue damage which all translate into more rapid recovery. Focused ultrasound is one of the rare technologies that fulfills the holy grail of both improving outcome and decreasing the cost of care. So, so focused ultrasound is a big deal. It will prove to be as revolutionary to therapy as magnetic resonance imaging was to diagnosis and it will spawn a multi-billion dollar industry. But it's in its early stages of evolution. It's where MR was 30 or 35 years ago. Fields like focused ultrasound evolve exponentially. The growth of focused ultrasound has been much more rapid than anyone anticipated. We're just now at the inflection point of this curve. And the dialogue has shifted from if to when focused ultrasound will have a real role in the therapeutic armamentarium. And our job is to make when now. Every month that transpires where focused ultrasound is not available translates into unnecessary death and disability and suffering for countless people. Our mantra is saving time, saving lives. But more importantly, focused ultrasound is just at the point where it's transitioning from primarily a research environment to a commercial and patient treatment environment. The predicate for our vision of a million patients being treated around the world annually is having successful commercial organizations to manufacture and distribute the technology. The research phase has been driven primarily by philanthropic dollars from 
foundations and individuals and government. But the commercial phase will depend primarily on investment from the private sector. Enter Coke Disruptive Technologies. Approximately 18 months ago, Coke began investing in focused ultrasound. This was a pivotal milestone in the evolution of the technology. The involvement of a major industrial powerhouse validated the field and created the precedent for other strategic investors to come in off the sidelines and it spurred additional investment. It was like an IV infusion of high octane adrenaline for this field. Chase, thanks so much for talking with me today. Why don't we start by you telling us about Coke Disruptive Technologies and what your role in the organization is. So Neil, um, thanks a lot for having me uh, this morning. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be able to, to speak with you on uh, the Focused Ultrasound Foundation and Focused Ultrasound um, industry. We're very excited to be part of this. I think it makes sense for me to start by addressing who Coke Industries is today and then get into KDT, if that's okay, Neil. Uh, that's absolutely perfect. Okay, great. So just a quick thumbnail on Coke. We are a private company. Uh, we have 10 different uh, industry business platforms that really cut across the majority of the economy. We play in a lot of different spaces. Um, we have 130,000 employees roughly today, and, and we, uh, we operate in, in over 60 countries. So a lot of people ask, you know, how did Coke get here? Um, how do you play in so many different industries? And uh, maybe just a little bit of explanation on our philosophy of three core principles that got us to where we are today and are is really important um, to the future of where Coke, um, what, it, what it grows into. And, um, and it also, I think, will be, in a, be um, informative to why we got into focused ultrasound um, as well. So I'll briefly hit these kind of three uh, core principles. And the first one is that we've always considered ourselves capability bounded uh, versus uh, being industry bounded. I think if you look at the majority of businesses, uh, they think more from how do I get in one industry and grow market share and demonstrate value there, which we do across all of our different industry platforms, but across Coke more broadly, we approach it more from what cap core capabilities do we have that are demonstrating value to, to customers and consumers in one industry and then prove that out, which then helps us say, okay, what are the other industries that we can point those core capabilities at? So just one example here, when my grandfather started Coke Industries, uh, we were in uh, crude oil refining, refined products and crude oil gathering. So that was an industry vertical, but what we quickly realized is our core capabilities that were adding value to customers um, were we were pretty good at engineering, we were good at moving product around, so logistics, and then we had a good operating capability. Those were the core capabilities that enabled us to get results. So then we started looking at that and say, over time, where can we take those three core capabilities and apply those across different industries? And that's what got us from crude oil and crude oil gathering into gas processing, chemicals, then fertilizers, even wood products with Georgia Pacific, glass, even electronics over time. So as you can see, if you have that different mindset, it opens up a world of opportunity in terms of where you can play and where you can point capabilities to add value. So that's one. Um, the second one I think that's been important um, for Coke is this deep belief in this idea of creative destruction. And this is, uh, this is Joseph Schumpeter's um, key kind of mental model on the way markets work. And um, the idea of creative destruction is that you have to constantly destroy your old practices, your old procedures, and even your products that have, you've been successful with over time. But you have to continually change those and even destroy the way you've done them in the past because the market's going to do it to you if you don't do it yourself. So you've got to constantly have that mindset of replacing those with better and better practices, procedures, and products that can keep up with what customers want or even get ahead of that to be able to, to demonstrate value over time. 
So that requires a very open mindset. Um, it's a very uncomfortable mindset as well versus the alternative of maybe being a, having a protectionist mindset and trying to guard um, what you've done historically because we believe that, and it's proven over time, that doesn't work. So the, the, it's the other core fundamental belief and core to our vision for the future is we have to drive creative destruction faster than we ever have. And then the third idea um, is this, this um, concept of mutual benefit. And that is very simply, how do we help our customers win? How do we create value for them? And if we start with a mindset of how do we create value for our customers and for society, and we do that well, then we will win and we will, um, we will earn um, margin in our products and be able to reinvest that over time. And that's a different mindset than coming at it from, hey, how do we get into a business and we make money and capture returns? This requires much longer term thinking, starting with the customer. And then if you do a good job there, you can earn those returns. So I wanted to start with that, Neil, to just kind of give a high level, and this is the way kind of Coke's philosophy, what has got us to this point, and what will what will enable us to hopefully continue to grow in the future. So um, KDT, uh, to your question, we created um, Coke Disruptive Technologies about two years ago as an extension of those three ideas that I, I just presented. But if you think about technology, and uh, obviously the, where you're spending your time, Neil, in uh, creating awareness around focus ultrasound and this revolutionary technology, we all know that technology is changing every single aspect of our lives. It's how we shop, how we move around and transport ourselves and products, how we communicate, and even how we monitor and improve health outcomes. And that's changing faster than ever. So our point of view is that we have to keep up or, or even be ahead of that pace of change. We feel like it's life or death for not only the business units that we play in today, um, but Coke Industries overall. So we recognize um, with the pace of change in technology that we have to apply creative destruction more aggressively than ever. And we need more technology capabilities to do this. So this was the idea and the starting point for Coke Disruptive Technologies. And our key thesis and what differentiated us in the marketplace was that we could bring Coke Industries, and I went through it, right, these 10 different industry platforms to the most disruptive and transformative founders in the world and bring, bring that platform as a laboratory for them to experiment in and to be able to leverage and take our assets and be able to unlock more value in their company than they otherwise would just taking capital from, from anyone. Um, so this was the key thesis, this Coke laboratory, what can we do to bring it to founders in a way that no other large company had done? And so the key problem um, that I think founders have seen in working with large corporates is that these large companies have great assets and they have great capabilities and they could help founders but they struggle to overcome silos in their businesses. Sometimes incentives aren't aligned. They can be slow and bureaucratic and even try to tie the, ha the hands of the founder with exclusivities around the technology. We said, how can we create a business within Coke um, that actually does the opposite of all that and, and really provides a solution that the market hasn't seen before? So we started a business, um, it was really, uh, you know, January of 2018 is when we really got rolling and, and we're open for business. And we started uh, Coke Disruptive Technologies that really our main role for Coke Industries is to originate these disruptive and transformative um, founders and companies, invest in them, and then connect them into Coke through this Coke laboratory um, concept. And so what we're trying to do there is really provide one-stop shopping across the, the economy with um, really this white glove treatment and how they come into Coke and experience Coke Industries so that we can help them. And we have a dedicated team within Coke Disruptive Technologies to do that. And so we try to offer our capabilities and subject matter expertise um, to help companies grow. We can be a customer of these technologies. We can be a supplier in some cases. 
and also a validator, as you mentioned in your in your opening. The other thing that we do within KDT is that we try to have a founder first mindset back to that mutual benefit idea I described before. How do we help them solve the problems um, that they're facing? It could be a capital solution. It could be understanding the regulatory environment, helping them with manufacturing, helping them with hiring processes. And so starting with how do we help the founder first? Then the last thing I would say is just this highly flexible capital structuring. That's a key differentiator that we feel like we bring to founders as well. We, we can enable them to stay private over the course of you know, 10, 15, 20 years and really grow into the company they want to be. Or if they want to, if it's pre-IPO capital and they're interested in going public within two or three years, we can offer that uh, flexibility as well. Um, and then on top of that, bring critical and strategic thinking to the table to help them think about the, the future of their company. So that's kind of KDT in a nutshell, how we got started and, and why we exist within Coke Industries. Hope that's helpful, Neil. Uh, that's a, a, a perfect, perfect uh, discussion, and it really frames the rest of our conversation. So, Chase, what captured your interest in focused ultrasound? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Neil. I didn't know anything about focused ultrasound until we got a call from a trusted source um, about this opportunity. A call came in to Coke Equity Development, and this was literally within weeks of KDT just getting um, stood up within the organization. And uh, we thought it was a better fit for Coke Disruptive Technologies, so the timing was perfect. And, uh, and then so we started our diligence process and started digging in. And pretty quickly, Neil, we knew it was something that we wanted to be a part of. And when our team saw the magic of focused ultrasound in a procedure up at Sunnybrook, um, we saw an ascent, a patient that was going into this uh, procedure that had essential tremor and the shaking that this patient had going in. And just within a couple hours coming out with almost no shaking and be able to to write uh, clearly on a piece of paper and drink a, a, a cup of water without spilling it. I mean, it was like magic, right? And seeing is believing on some of these new technologies. So when we saw that and, um, and met the team, we said, how can we go from seeing that one patient at, at Sunnybrook to helping millions experience this, this uh, groundbreaking technology? How can you take it from one, di one disease and essential tremor and apply this ultrasound technology to many. And, uh, you know, it was such a good fit because it's safer, as you said, more cost effective with, with much better outcomes and much lower risk to the patient versus alternatives like uh, deep brain stimulation, for example. So all that, it was something that, that, uh, that we wanted to be a part of. And, and what, yeah. What most excites you about this amazing technology? You know, I, I think part of what you said in the uh, in the beginning that this is it just has it's a foundational technology and a platform that has the potential to help millions of lives across so many different brain disorders. Um, you know, the, the the multiple shots on goal kind of concept here can provide multiple therapy modes. So it has ablation capabilities, has the ability to open up the blood brain barrier for targeted drug delivery, um, and just the ability to hit so many different disorders, essential tremor, pain, epilepsy, um, oncology, addiction, with opioid addiction and the growing problem we have there. There's so many, they're working on Alzheimer's, right? Um, there's so many different disease states that, that can be treated with this. That's one of the reasons we're, we're so excited and we're excited about Inside Tech and their leadership in this space. If they can do well, then that's gonna inspire others um, to innovate um, and spawn a lot of different technology to, uh, to help transform the space and help so many patients. You know, in, in a short time, your investment in Inside Tech has spawned the first focused ultrasound unicorn. In other words, a, a privately held company with a valuation of over a billion. How do you feel about that achievement? 
Well, you know, first of all, we're just very proud to be selected as a preferred partner by Insight Tech, that they wanted to partner up with us and really make a go of this and make a meaningful impact um, to the world. And so we feel great about, about the significant investment that we've made. I would tell you, Neil, I'm also very proud that it was our first investment, as I articulated before. And uh, I think it's great that it's in Israel. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time now over in Israel. It's a wonderful entrepreneurial culture that we feel like is very aligned with Coke. Um, so um, getting into um, Israel with an investment with people um, uh, in, in the culture that uh, Insight Tech has, we feel really great about that. And the progress that we've seen since that first investment um, I'll just hit maybe a, a few data points on on why we're so excited to con continue um, the uh, the investment with Insight Tech and and that is just the number of procedures. I think you mentioned it in your opening, but um, they have since we made the investment in January of 2018, they've doubled the amount of procedures every year since that investment. They've treated now close to 3,000 essential tremor and Parkinson's tremor dominant patients in just those two years. They've expanded their talent and capabilities immensely. There's exploding interest uh, for their technology from hospitals, from universities, and they're now commercial in 22 countries with an R&D pipeline uh, that has uh, a tremendous potential, as you know. So Chase, can you be very specific and tell us how Insight Tech fits in the vision of Coke Disruptive Technologies? I'd love to, Neil. I appreciate the question. Because a lot of uh, folks in the marketplace ask us, this does not seem like a Coke Industries kind of obvious choice in terms of investment. Um, how did how did that fit your vision? And uh, what we would what we tell people is it is right in the heart of our sweet spot of what we're looking for, the type of companies. And so let me just give me a minute to articulate why Insight Tech is such a good fit. And so we screen companies and opportunities across four things. One, principled entrepreneurship. Two, uh, disruptiveness in the marketplace. Three, um, how high of potential does it have? And four, can, is there mutual benefit between Coke and that company? So let me just articulate why Insight Tech across that, that, that filter. Um, on principal and entrepreneurship, this is the very first filter we look at. And for us, at least, we believe that it's very important that there's true leadership at the top, great principal and entrepreneurs that have a track record of growing companies and they're gonna do it in a principal and do it in the right way, and a management team to support that leader. We think that's critical in launching and growing any technology business. But I would say Insight Tech specifically has shown extreme foresight in how they hire, uh, how they promote, and how they grow their leaders to make sure that they've got the best team in the market. And we're all in on this process with them. If you go back to the founder, Kobe Vortman, and his vision uh, for creating this technology in the first place back in the, the late 90s. And then Maurice Fair, who uh, is currently the, um, the CEO of the company, he's got a great track record. He was a co-founder of Mako Surgical, very successful um, growth of that company. So we had seen that he had done it before and what he's done to build a, uh, an, a truly awesome leadership team. We have such a good feeling about the culture of what he's building and the team that he's got to, uh, to support him um, and just how entrepreneurial this team is. We feel really good about the future. And so that's the first one, principled entrepreneurship. They really um, demonstrated that. We saw that right out of the gates. The second one, which you talked about in your opening is disruptiveness. And uh, we wanna see that uh, a technology or a business model is highly disruptive versus the current alternatives in the market. But I think the technology um, speaks for itself. itself. It's driving better outcomes at a lower cost but by enabling doctors to conduct incisionless surgery, which is amazing, right? Giving a doctor, helping them go from a scalpel to sound waves to be able to do this in a way that's non-invasive and, um, and, and from a quality of life standpoint, highly disruptive. 
to the uh, to the existing alternatives and transforming people's lives. So very, very excited about, you know, both on the value to the consumer and the patient and also the the cost uh, to the patient as well. Disruptive on both ends of that. The third one, high potential. Um, we always ask the question, can it be a platform? This is a guiding principle that we look at. We look for in value creation, regardless of the sector. It's the diversity and capability that a true platform technology can deliver. And in Insight Tech, we see and have now validated the true benefit that a closed loop technology platform can offer both to patients and to physicians. They've got extremely efficient learning curves and uh, the diversity of the shots on goal they have with the various indications, which we already mentioned, and then the growth of adoption across the world for both commercial and research applications really support this thesis that Insight Tech is already a platform. And then the, the fourth um, piece around mutual benefit, can Coke help a company like Insight Tech beyond just writing a check? Um, the capital is important, but uh, what's more important is to be able to help them with their strategy, help them with manufacturing. Our Molex company in the electronic space helps them think about how they manage their supply chain, how they design their manufacturing capabilities. And then from a regulatory standpoint as well, our public sector team helping them um, get in front of the right decision makers and the FDA to demonstrate their technology and how it can transform uh, millions of lives and create that awareness within the right regulatory bodies, I think has been important to um, Insight Tech's uh, uh, growth and success. So we saw that uh, mutual benefit opportunity where we could help them beyond the capital. So that was kind of the last test. We said all four of these line up. This is in the sweet spot of, of the type of company that we're looking for. And uh, that's why we're excited about continuing to grow with them. Terrific. So what, what plans do you have for future investment in the focused ultrasound field in addition to Insight Tech, if any? Well, we're always evaluating opportunities um, that can transform people's lives, Neil. So we are, we're very open-minded to, to, to continue investing in the space. But I think the latest Insight Tech um, investment, um, that the, the Series F that we just um, led, shows our passion and support for focused ultrasound uh, broadly. And that, that has significantly increased our position in Insight Tech and our commitment um, to the space. Is, is uh, Coke Disruptive Technologies interested in investing in other health, health sciences, businesses, biotech, medical, med tech, medical research, and so on? Yeah, the, the short answer is yes. We're constantly looking for highly disruptive innovations and principled entrepreneurs that run these companies in, in all industries, but we are interested in, in healthcare um, specifically. And, and I think this space is very interesting for KDT. Uh, I mean, one is what we're living right now, right? This recent pandemic that's exposing weaknesses to our healthcare system and shows how much opportunity there is to improve it. Um, and we wanna be a part of that solution. And also the fact that it's roughly 20% of our GDP in this country alone and uh, is just a critical industry to help remove barriers and improve millions of lives. I'll just tell you what our current exposure to the industry is across Coke Industries, and some of these are from, from KDT. Of course, uh, Inside Tech um, is one of the largest um, commitments that we've made, um, both in, in capital and capability that we're bringing to the table. You know, So 2018 made an investment, and then we just made a sign another significant investment um, here this month. Um, we made an investment in November of last year in a company called Viar. Um, this was started by a founder named uh, Raviv Melamed using radio frequency technology for early, that started in early detection of breast cancer. Now they're applying it across, this technology across multiple industries. So I encourage you to, to, to check that out online. Viar is the name of the company. We're very excited about the potential. Um, and then we have a, a few uh, early stage companies in the pipeline right now. Um, but clearly, you know, we want more um, that can be game changers like Insight Tech, like Viar. We're looking across the space and across this theme um, in the medical space. But we also recognize, Neil, that this area takes patience 
and it takes significant capital. Um, but we feel like that's a comparative advantage that KDT has because we have both of those. Um, but we, you know, we're we're here to to help unlock um, that value across this industry, and we're very excited about it. Chase, what message would you like Coke Disruptive Technologies to communicate to the focused ultrasound community at large? I appreciate the question, um, Neil. I, I think. Our involvement with focused ultrasound exemplifies, exemplifies, excuse me, our core values of whatever we do, we're trying to transform people's lives. That's a core vision of, of Coke Industries. How can we make people's lives better and do it in a way that's better than their alternatives and always consume fewer resources? That's our core vision. So <clears throat> it's one of the reasons we're so excited about uh, focused ultrasound. The other thing I would say is that we're always looking for opportunities to advance this, this field. So we, enc we encourage the community at large, uh, the focused ultrasound community and healthcare community broadly to share their ideas with us and what role we can play uh, to really drive change faster in transforming people's lives. And then I'd say the last thing, um, I can't overemphasize the role that the the foundation that, that you lead, Neil, the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, plays in driving the field forward. Um, and uh, we'll probably get into that a little bit more here, but I, I just hope that all stakeholders in this space will continue to enthusiastically support and partner um, with the foundation and, and also um, in the industry across their various programs. So I'd say that's, kind of, that's the key message. It's a great message, and in particular, thanks for the endorsement. You got well, it. Well, let's let's shift the the uh, conversation now to a discussion about the Focused Ultrasound Foundation. So the problem is that the evolution of any new, highly disruptive therapeutic technology, from idea and concept and laboratory research to widespread utilization as a mainstream standard of care is a glacial process that often takes decades. And every month, I'm repeating myself, but it's important, every month that this technology is not available is translating into unnecessary death and disability and suffering for countless people, including our friends, our family, and ourselves. So in October of 2006, we created the Focused Ultrasound Foundation as a unique, highly entrepreneurial medical research, education, and advocacy organization. Although we're not venture-backed, we absolutely operate as a venture-backed, high-performance, high-impact, high-technology service organization in the private sector all of our systems and our processes and our culture are what you'd see in a similar organization in the private sector. So the way we operate is our strategy is to examine on a regular, essentially quarterly basis, the critical path from laboratory research to widespread utilization as a standard of care. And we identify the choke points or barriers, and then we apply resources where we can be effective in overcoming those barriers and make an impact. And we have a variety of activities that we engage in. We become the compass or the guiding light for the entire field. We influence the direction of the field by identifying critical unmet clinical needs and setting research priorities. We work hard to change the culture of the entire ecosystem, of all of the stakeholders in the ecosystem, to make all of them more patient-centric with a high sense of urgency and collaboration by breaking down silos of secrecy. One of our major, major activities is to organize and conduct and fund research to develop the evidence of feasibility and safety and cost we educate clinicians and scientists through our fellowship and internship programs. And we orchestrate the flow of information by aggregating and sharing knowledge 
through our website, our newsletter, our webinars, and social media channels. And we organize and sponsor a number of meetings and symposia and workshops. You can learn more by going to the Foundation's website. Just Google Focused Ultrasound Foundation. So Chase, back to you. From your perspective, what most impresses you about the Focused Ultrasound Foundation and the contributions that it makes? Well, Neil, I mean, just what you went through there, I can attest to um, what you guys are doing and validate your strategy. I mean, I, I see it from my seat, and I know the Insight Tech uh, team certainly sees it um, in their partnership with you um, to help drive faster adoption, more awareness of the technology, and, and research that uh, wouldn't be uh, in the marketplace otherwise uh, it, had it not been for uh, what the, the foundation is doing. So, but I, I would say just back it up a, a little bit at a higher level, um, the way you know we think about partnerships at, at Coke, we have a little bit of a mental model on this. Any successful partnership has three requirements. Um, one, we have to have shared values. Two, we have to have a shared vision of the future and, uh, and where, we, where we could go. And three, we need to bring complementary capabilities. So if I put Focused Ultrasound Foundation and Coke through that framework and that model, um, I, I think from a shared value standpoint, clearly we have them. Uh, we, we both believe in breaking barriers to transform people's lives. Um, we both believe in driving what we call a republic of science, making sure that there's a global network um, to, to um, get at the best knowledge that's critical for breakthroughs. We can't do all this ourselves. We got to leverage what, what's in the marketplace. We certainly both believe in creative destruction, which I described before. Um, and I think um, both organizations are very entrepreneurial. Neil, I know your travel schedule and how hard you hit the pavement. So I, I, I see that in the rest of your team as well. So from a value standpoint, I think we get a big check there um, on our partnership. And then from a shared vision standpoint, we've talked about it across this um, the full interview here and that we're trying to transform millions of lives and make a meaningful impact um, across this industry. And then on the complementary capabilities, inside tech, um, I, well, for, I would say from a KDT standpoint, we're bringing capital um, to the game with inside tech as our key bet to ad advance the space. Hopefully we're bringing some validation and some more credibility um, to the field as well with our interest there. And then also the capabilities from a regulatory standpoint in understanding how to navigate um, uh, the space, which is highly complex, but um, we, we have a lot of experience in, in navigating the, the regulatory waters here. And then from uh, the capabilities that you went through, um, I think are, are pretty obvious here. You guys have capabilities to create awareness, research capabilities, education, networking and collaboration to connect the dots across the industry. You go through that model, and I think it's a it's a pretty darn good um, partnership. And so that's why we're excited about um, what you guys have done and what we can do together going forward. Chase, specifically, how has the foundation helped Coke Disruptive Technologies? Yeah, the, the foundation, Neil, has helped us in a lot of ways. Um, I would say the first thing is really supporting clinical trials. Um, would be one there, you know, for the whole industry, which, which helps um, create awareness and improve research that otherwise would not be done. And I know there are several partnerships there with uh, with Inside Tech, which which obviously helps KDT. You guys have identified subject matter experts and philanthropists to fund um, essential research to help grow the sector. Uh, you helped us think through core questions in our diligence process of of looking at the company when uh, we didn't have a lot of background in the beginning. And uh, you helped us expand our network in the field um, so that we can continue to understand and learn the landscape and figure out what growth opportunities um, are out there for Coke Industries and, and for KDT. And I think broadly, I mentioned this before, but just uh, creating awareness for the space that helps the whole industry, certainly helps Inside Tech and helps KDT 
you guys do an excellent job promoting the sector and promoting the industry and bringing awareness to it um, in a space, as you mentioned before, that's that's relatively early. Um, so I, I hope that you mentioned it, it took um, roughly 30 years to get MRIs to be really that standard um, in the marketplace. Um, I think we can do it much faster, especially with social media and new communication tools to get this out there. The, the amazing network that you guys have, we're going to be able to really um, blow this out in terms of awareness and do it much faster than what we could do even 10 years ago. So I'm excited to partner with, with you, with Insight Tech, with the rest of the field um, to do that. But we, the other thing we need to do is continually, we need to apply creative destruction to our relationship as well. And what I mean by that is constantly change our methods and practices in creating awareness, in building our network, in everything that we do together to continue um, challenging and innovating the way that we, we've done things to, to tilt this curve even steeper. So, uh, Chase, from the foundation's perspective, we can't imagine having a more suitable partner than Coke Disruptive Technologies in that our values are essentially totally aligned, our visions are aligned, but most importantly, the chemistry on a personal basis works extremely well. So we're very grateful for your support. It's a pleasure and a privilege to work together on this noble cause, which will revolutionize therapy and improve the lives of millions of people around the world. And opportunities to be involved in activities like this only come around about once in a lifetime. The opportunity to employ capital and other resources, whether you're in the uh, public or private sector, only comes around once in a lifetime. And it's a privilege for all of us to be involved in this. Well, Neil, um, thank you and the Focus Ultrasound Foundation for your partnership. We are extremely excited to make a meaningful impact to transform millions of lives. And thanks for the opportunity uh, to speak with you today.